With us are Nora Owen, a former Fine Gael Minister for Justice and Deputy Leader of the Party. Mick Wallace, the only left-wing property developer in the <laughs> world outside of North Korea. Terry Crone, the Communications Clinic and long-term advisor to political leaders. And Senator Maloney, political correspondent of the Irish Daily News. Yes, yeah. Why hasn't he been asked? <laughs> Why hasn't this man been yeah, asked? Have you, were you asked by all this independent group? Because you'd make a great independent candidate. Would you vote for me? Well, I wouldn't be in your constituency, if you were. so I couldn't. I guess I, would, I might give you one, but oh, I'll give you come one. On. It's, ones I, it's ones I need. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's great when you're going around canvassing, which I'm doing, and people say, oh, yeah, we're going to vote for you, but you never ask the crucial question, you know, where on the ballot why paper. Wouldn't you, why wouldn't you give them a number one? <laughs> well, if, if there was a Fine Gael, good Fine Gael candidate, I would give them, I think, on preference, give them the number one. But irrespective, the irrespective of how they compare. Well, if, no, no, if they were a good candidate, I mean, I'd obviously compare them to you, and they mightn't come up to muster, you know, but I, I'm, ne I'm never going to be living in Wexford. What are you thinking? Uh, believe it or not, I've decided to run. Really? Yay. Is this an announcement tonight? Uh, yeah, I've, 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 I've been mulling over for um, oh, a few months. So, um, what constituency, Mick? Uh, Wexford. Oh, good. Um, good five seat. Yeah, good yeah. five seat. It's um, no, it's a bit late in the day, but um, it's a bit late anyway. If I went a month ago, because the uh, the five sitting TDs uh, two Fingale, two Fianna Fáil and Brendan Howden from Labour um, would be odds on to get back in and should they have been coming since the last day they were elected mm. so well, May I wish you good luck Thank you Because um, I think it's a brave thing to do you know anybody who stands but up But it's a naughty thing to do <laughs> I know that but I've, I've, do I've, I've been doing crazy things all my life so this won't be anything much different Yes it will it won't be half as interesting it'll be a total disappointment to you you'll be able to do nothing Well we don't know that yet well, first of all, um, it would be totally are, you, are you saying trying to get elected or after being elected? Oh, no, or trying to get elected is the best fun. Yeah. But it's just once you are elected, it goes... What is your platform, Mick, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> he built it himself. I know. <laughs> Scaffolding. Um, I mean, why am I standing? Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, I do think that uh, the people of this country have been poorly served by the politicians in general. Um, and... I do care about how our society is made up. Um, if I wanted a, an easy time, I certainly wouldn't uh, mm, be doing but, it. But, but I mean, everybody agrees with I've, the first I've, two points. So what's okay, the I, I've, I mean, I, I haven't been taking the easy pass uh, much, for much of my life anyway. I mean, um, as a, a builder um, who was critical of, of the, the government for the last 15 years, uh, it made things very difficult. Uh, as a builder, as anyone in business, if you weren't uh, in league with the party of the day, which was Fianna Fáil, it did things, make things more difficult. For example, I mean, it's common knowledge that uh, I put up a series of banners uh, complaining mm -hmm. about things that our government uh, were doing, support they gave uh, to different wars and that. Um, and uh, it was proved very costly for me because I lost a lot of contracts over it. Mick, mm -hmm. that's all fascinating and worthy history. Assuming you got elected, what would you do differently in the first two months? Mm. Okay, uh, more than likely, uh, I, I mean, I would only certainly uh, be in opposition. Um, I do think that um, I would be hoping that uh, there would be enough independent candidates who might be of like mind, who see a need for political reform and then... Like the, what, specifically? Well, I disagree with uh, a lot of things. I mean, there's 166 members in the Dáil. Uh, the average in Europe is 54 for 4.2 million people. I think so there's twice too many of them. You want to join I, them? I, dis I disagree with yeah. the whole role of a TD. I think the TD... So why are you doing it? Uh, oh, I, think, I, I think the role should yeah. be changed. Right, I think that the TD at the moment, uh, most of their energies are all about looking after things at a very local level, and they're interfering in local government in a way that isn't healthy. But and I, I think I wanna, I I one, 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 one of the huge reforms that we need, if this country is to function in a positive way, we need real local government. Mm. We don't have it. But Mick, we and did away. They did. The country did away with the dual mandate, and that meant that councillors couldn't be TDs and vice versa. Now, 
it's the people themselves who demand of both the councillors and the TDs to be present for their local meetings and their issues. So we as a people must educate ourselves as well about the difference between the jobs that TDs and councillors are doing. If a TD doesn't turn up at a meeting, I'm likely, or somebody else in, in, in the locality is likely to get a call and say, why was this TD and this TD at the meeting and why was this TD okay, not? And, do you and if I say they're in at a committee meeting, they'll say, well then, they won't need to come near me for a vote. You know, that's mm. the way yeah, it but works. You think that's right? No, I don't. I mean, I do think there should be a difference. Far, far. Of the government being responsible to the Dáil and yet controlling the Dáil. Yes. Should, there's no accountability. Well, our constitution and nobody, demands the government and, and to, to be in charge of legislation. Not any of the political parties talking about political reform addresses that point. Not one of them. Well, Mick will do it. Mm. But I, I mean, think there's a huge lack of accountability at all levels of governance in this country, right? At local level and at uh, central government level. And we... There's been several examples uh, in the last 10 years. I mean, the, the way Michal Martin uh, got out of uh, his little tight corner and just, he, he was... Which tight corner? Uh, Three or four of them. The, the, <laughs> over the, the, the residential home. homes. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, uh, the report was thrown on his desk and uh, somebody did a report. He was responsible for the department or oh, he didn't read the report. Mm. I mean, you, you wouldn't make it up. Mm. But do I and, yet the, and yet the people still vote mm. them in. You yes, know, that, I, this I, I understand the, that. Yeah. I mean, listen. I mean, at the moment, right? Uh, okay. I mean, maybe if, if by chance I did get elected and I was in the parliament, uh, maybe you're right. Maybe I'd be completely frustrated. Maybe I cannot. I ma maybe I couldn't do anything about it. But uh, I do feel. Uh, I do feel that I should try. I do feel that. Uh, I've tried a lot of things in my life, and generally speaking, I have I have managed to make things happen. And uh, maybe it's an impossible task, but I won't know it unless I try it. Mm. And I mean, uh, the, I mean, the worst thing just probably is what you put sorry. up. Uh, remember, you had a banner up about the Iraq War, opposing mm. the Iraq War in Ireland's facilitation of that. What were the other posters you put up? Well, the first one was in '98. It was against the war in Serbia, the bombing of Serbia. Yes, yeah. and uh, our government. Um, they, um, they, they took the side of NATO completely on that war, and yeah. there was no logic to it. I mean, it, it turned out. I mean, it was it was Tony Blair uh, painted it as the just war, but it turned well, out very much otherwise. Was as well. and, and, and that actually worked because don't forget it. I mean, it was a short, sharp campaign, and it resulted in the uh, the Serbs withdrawing from Kosovo, and it was all about Kosovo and what was going on there. But that's a yeah, I mean, separate matter. The, I'm just, are you going to go to uh, the, 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 the problems, the the problems meeting, of yeah. Kosovo uh, are, are fairly, uh, they haven't gone away. No. What else did you have posters about? I had one about the bombing of Lebanon, uh, the time Israel decided uh, to... No, but posters now for the Have you got your new posters? Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. But let's just no, see. sorry, this was asking about Basel. I had one about, okay, the North War, North and East, North American terrorism. Are we against the Nice Treaty? Um, I didn't think that it was uh, a good deal for Ireland. I, I do think that um, one thing that really annoyed me was that uh, th there was a move at that time. I mean, listen, from after the Depression in the 1930s, we had, we had uh, John M M Millard Keynes' philosophy, uh, and we came out of it. And his big incentive was... One of his driving things was that, first of all, the state has to be involved in the organisation of its people, in the organisation of society. Now, he, he, he wasn't, he, he, was a, he was a right wing, right? But he, he, did, he did so, in a, in a, so with a social side to it, and he, he believed in the creation of employment. And uh, GDP grew from 1936 to 1972, GDP grew at 2.9% on average. But, uh, that philosophy was uh, Milton Friedman's philosophy came in then, and neoliberalism. And since then, GDP, from, from 72 to 08, GDP grew at only 1.9%. This is the period when the markets were supposed to be able to take care of everything, and they were going to make everything right. But in actual fact, inequality has grown in society, poverty has become a bigger problem in the developed world, and we've had not only trouble, and we've had, we've had, a, you, we've had a couple of economic crashes. The, why don't you join the United Left Alliance yeah. then? Um, because there's a whole lot of things that I wouldn't agree with him on. I mean, listen, mm -hmm. I, I'm not. Um, I, I, I believe that business. I, I wouldn't. Every citizen in this country 
deserves to be taken care of, their interests need to be looked after, right? Including the business community. I mean, I've been involved in business all my life, and I do think that uh, the government should help put business on a strong footing. It's very important, right? But I don't think that the interest of, of the citizen can be put second place to the interest of big business because we've had too much of that and the neoliberal philosophy dictates that big business comes first and the interest of the citizen comes second. Now I think that you can look after the citizen first and I think that's the role of the state. Big business is very good at looking after itself and I think the state has to play a stronger role in looking after its people. Now, and I think that can be done without Big, but that business in general is suffering in a country like Ireland. Well, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm all in favour of helping business. I mean, businesses are in a terrible place at the moment, and the present government, mm. Mm. which are, uh, well, I tell you no, 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 there are people got, watching nobody this has a long, Nobody has got a longer poli party political I was going to say that. that. I said um, <laughs> than you have. Uh, I tell so you, there's people, there's, watching this program, the party there's people watching this programme tonight saying, why the hell wasn't I allowed given that big long speech <laughs> in the middle of Vince's? Your programme is so popular Vince, now. Vince, Vince. You've just given him his platform for the night. Well, it's give great. Us a, give us a break. If Elder came on, he'd get the same platform he would be allowed to speak on and on without interrupting. <laughs> I think Mick is overqualified for this job. Yes, I think so, yeah. Have you got your posters done and your you know, handy out literature and everything? No, but I'll, I'll, get, get, him, I'll get him pretty And quickly. you know you have to be nominated by the 9th of February and all that. That's right, yeah, next yeah. Wednesday, yeah. is it? Next Wednesday, yeah, uh, by yeah. midday, yes, yeah, yeah, all that. Uh, and you have to have 500, 500 euros if you're not a political party. Could I have a loan of that 500 off you? I'm broke. There's a 500 euro deposit, yes. Right. Right, if, if you're not, I, yeah. I couldn't give you and 500. And how many votes does he have to get in order to win back his deposit? 25% before he's eliminated. If he gets 25%, he gets back. 25% of the he gets, he gets the He gets this allowance yeah. from the state of 8,000 something. Mm -hmm. Mm. All right. Uh, uh, apart from Mick yeah. Wallace's <laughs> candidature, is there anything I'm else not, I'm not announcing in anything, no. <laughs> this, this, is, this is a very exciting programme. I've never yeah. been on a programme of yours, Vincent, when somebody actually announced the candidature. <laughs> so neither, it's, neither have I been on a programme. <laughs> well, I decided... <laughs> nobody ever announces anything. And you know something? You should wear that pink and everything. It'd be lovely on the poster. <laughs> <laughs> now, you look good at that, yeah. Terry. <laughs> I was looking at Enda on the monitor there. Oh, could stop we, it. You're we, obsessed just, with Enda. Look, not Enda. Mick on the monitor. Told you Can you we are. have a, a close-in uh, yeah. shot of Mick there again? It's wonderful. Let's, let's have a close-in shot of Mick. There it is. Look at that. He looks a, li a little like Dame and Edna. And <laughs> leveraged. <laughs> leveraged. <laughs> what, what? Now, you want to be careful. You can't. Uh, greens have gone for a pink background on their poster. You can't do that now if you're wearing pink. Uh, well, I, I, I don't need a pink background. I, oh, do I, I have the courage to wear pink. Yes, Just you like have, the yeah. Dudes. <laughs> yes. And you do the have The Weisford Dudes. The Weisford have changed the whole attitude to pink in Ireland. You know what I, I think? You didn't even know the Wexford Youth's were I don't know who the Wexford Youth well, are. Well, what planet Sorry. are you living on? I, a planet no sport. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, listen, there's more to the Wexford Youth's than sport, right? It's, oh, anyway, it's, a, it's a social You've made the Wexford yes, candidates yes, project. flip yes, and mad. And, uh, you, you, should, you should look into The Wexford <laughs> candidates who are watching this programme will be absolutely furious. I've never before <laughs> been told by somebody on a television programme that I should look into the Wexford Youths. <laughs> I will. I will. I will. You want to make a another yes, political broadcast, or, yeah. or do you? <laughs> no, no uh, I. At your turn now. <laughs> I, I do think that um, the government of the day had a, had, a, had a lot more power in their hands dealing with the ECB than they actually took advantage of. I think the ECB were in a very bad place, That's and right, they didn't. Right. Uh, <coughs> the Germans have, have obviously, uh, at the moment. What Germany wants is uh, very different to what most of the rest of Europe wants because we, we can't possibly live in the same league as Germany and I don't know how long more we're going to be able to stay in well, the same Germany league. Principally don't, uh, German concern primarily is they don't want to have to bail out countries all over Europe. Well, okay, the, the Germans' biggest concern at that time was the German banks are owed 174 billion by Irish banks. Mm. Uh, the, English, the English banks are owed 195 billion by Irish, by Irish banks. Irish banks in total uh, at present owe 550 billion euros to foreign banks. Right? And the big problem is that if the Irish banks were uh, not saved with Irish government, and they shouldn't have been, in my opinion, they should have been allowed to sink, uh, the, and this is, one, this is one of the few times in the history of, of money that the bondholders have got away so lightly. We're going to be in big trouble. <laughs>